good morning and welcome to the services of Franklin Church of Christ. We appreciate you all watching us this morning on Facebook Live. We have several that are in attendance this morning. We just appreciate everyone. What a wonderful opportunity we have today on a beautiful day to worship God, to give him the glory in everything that we do. I hope you'll spend some time in, pre in preparation for that today. We look forward also and on Wednesday evenings in the month of August of hearing Brother Walt Lever, who's the minister to Brentwood Hills Church of Christ in Nashville. He'll be bringing for us on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 uh, messages from God's Word. It'll be on Facebook Live. We look forward to hearing his messages. It's good to be with everyone today. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home. Now let's continue our worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me, King of all days, all so highly exalted. Glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for our sake became poor. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether Together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and Friend, who would have thought that alone could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit,
If you want to go ahead and bow with me, we're going to have a prayer for the Lord's Supper this morning. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to take of the bread this morning, we are thankful for your Son, Jesus, that he gave up his seat in heaven to walk as a man on this earth, that he was made a physical body to be beaten and broken on a cruel cross. We take of this bread this morning in remembrance of him. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to take of the fruit of the vine this morning, I'm reminded that you are an omniscient and all-knowing and all-present and an awesome God, and that from the beginning of time you have had a plan for your people, a plan of salvation, and that you sent your Son to this world not to condemn it, but that through him and the shedding of his blood, your plan could be fulfilled. We take the fruit of the vine this morning in remembrance of his blood that flowed from the cross, the very same blood that frees us from our sins today. Amen. We'll go ahead and have a prayer for our offering this week. Heavenly Father, we are a blessed people and a blessed church here in Franklin. I pray this morning that we might approach your throne with a generous and a giving heart. Father, I pray that as we give, we are mindful of those this morning that have a need. And that as a church, we might be able to work to fulfill those needs. I pray that in all things, as people and as a church in the community, that in all things that we do, that we are able to give you the glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart words of life, words of hope. Give us strength. Help us go in this world where we roam. Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the Ancient words in part, holy words of our faith, handed down to this age, came to us through sacrifice. Oh, heed the faithful words of Christ, holy words long preserved. For our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with all. Oh, let the ancient words impart, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart, we have come with open hearts.
Father, we thank you so much for being our God. We thank you for being our Father and allowing us to be your children. Hallowed be thy name, thy great and glorious name, name above all others. Help us, Father, to adore thee. Help us to be a grateful people, for we know we truly are blessed by you. And we pray, Father, that you'd give us our daily bread today, give us what we need. And, Father, we just um, thank you so much. Father, we pray that worship worldwide today will, will please you. We pray for the church everywhere. This is most unusual times, our Heavenly Father, and we just realize more and more each day that we're so dependent upon you. Thank you for being our God. We ask our Heavenly Father that you bless this church at Franklin. Bless its members. And we pray, Father, that if there are specific needs of our members this morning that you will nurture them, that you'll look after them. Help us, Father, to say words of encouragement for those that need comfort and for help. We pray for the family of Miss Ruby Johnson as we had a memorial service for her yesterday. We pray that they'll be strengthened, Father, in the comfort of your word and by the comfort of your spirit. Our Father, we pray for your spirit this morning, that he might dwell in us and that we, Father, might share in your spirit so that people around us will see us living a redeemed life that they might be able to identify our Redeemer. Father, we thank you for the blessings of this day. Help us again to always be a grateful people. And Father, we pray that if we've done wrong today that you'll forgive us. We thank you for being faithful. And may we be found being faithful in return to you, our Father. But we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The reading this morning comes from John chapter 6, verses 35 to 38. John chapter 6, verses 35 to 38. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Good morning. We're going to continue today looking at the avenue of prayer and the question that was asked of our Lord, teach us to pray. You know, Janet and I don't watch a lot of television anymore, especially the local channels, the local networks. And, and maybe one of the reasons why we don't do that is because we do not enjoy commercials. And if, and if we watch something on those channels, we'll tape it and watch it later so that we can fast forward through the commercials. So in today's times, I don't know what's selling, what's not, what's popular, what isn't, because I don't seem to watch the commercials. But I remember several months ago, um, and, and I know you've seen this. It's, it's a commercial where this young man in his mid-30s are still living. He's still living at home with his parents. 
and he's making all these demands. He wants room service. He wants a data port for his computer. He wants points for free airlines. And the family, especially the grandmother, hoots at him for making all these unreasonable requests and says, well, what do you think this is? A holiday inn? You know, sometimes when we pray, we make requests of God as though we're living in a hotel, ordering room service. And so we pray, Father in heaven, give me good weather, give me financial success, perfect health, improve my handicap, give me gifted children, a more elaborate vacation. And I wonder if there's times when God is laughing and saying, do you think I'm a bellhop at a hotel? James chapter 4 verse 3 says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. You may spend what you get on pleasures. Well, there's a big difference, you see, in living in a hotel and living in our Father's house. I hope we recognize this. In the hotel, the owner is a stranger. But in the Lord's house, the owner is our Father. In a hotel, you get what you order. But when you worship God, we're expecting to do our part. We're expecting to serve others. In a hotel, you might have a diverse menu. But in, in God's house... You have what we deserve to get today. In a hotel, you have to pay for all the services. But in God's house, we receive the riches of His grace free from the Father's hand. So in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us how to appropriately make requests of our Heavenly Father. He said, now when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, how would be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So today, I want us to look at the next phrase. And that is, give us today our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, Jesus taught us to make requests. Don't be afraid when you pray to God, our Heavenly Father, to ask Him for things. He loves to give good gifts to His children. So since we're part of His family, I think it's appropriate for us to realize that we can ask for requests. Give us this day our daily bread, because we are not exactly ordering room service at a Holiday Inn. We're praying to our Heavenly Father who can provide all our needs. And I think today's lesson will be wrapped up in a single sentence that says this. Prayer should be a daily expression. Now the Lord's Prayer presupposes to us that uh, we pray every day. Because He says, give us today our daily bread. And I'm afraid that there are some that pray to God on the weekly plan, not the daily plan. They'll pray to Him weekly, or they'll pray monthly. And it seems like there are times when we come, you know, and, and we try to catch up on prayer. We haven't been praying a lot, and so we, we come and we want to, we want to pray up. We, we want to catch up. Well, I think we're to pray every day. You know, there are times when we reserve prayer for emergencies, there are times when we pray in crisis. If we're getting ready to face an operation or a child is lost or there's financial trouble, it seems like we're eager to pray at that point. But Jesus did say in this model prayer that he gave to his disciples, give us this day our daily bread. So pray now. Pray today. I like what Dwight Moody once wrote. He says, a man can no more take his supply of grace for the future that he can eat enough for six months or take sufficient air into his lungs at one time to sustain life for a week. So we must draw upon God's boundless store of grace from day to day as we need it. And that's why it's so important for us to pray every day. You know, the Muslims have a law 
And they want you to pray five times a day. Several weeks ago, when we looked at the character of Daniel, he opened his windows and faced towards Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day. But prayer will become a positive source in our life when we develop the custom of praying every day. I believe we are to pray every day. I think it should be a habit to us, just the same as dressing every day, brushing our teeth, kissing our mate, raising the garage door before we back out. It, it ought to just be a common place. For, it ought to be positive habits for us. So I want us to, I want to challenge you today to develop the habit of praying privately every day. Take, take the time to pray, not just mutter a few sentences when we drive to work or when you lay down at night, you know, we say good night, Lord, and before I go to sleep, let me request these things. But let's give God a premier segment of time every day when we're most alert and we could focus on Him. I'm sort of a morning person. I get up pretty early every day. You might be a night person. Whatever your personality is, choose that time without interruption to be alone and pray to our Heavenly Father. That's why on Wednesday evening when it's my night to do devotionals, I always suggest that you gather your children together and that you take that opportunity to talk about that devotional with them and also to pray with them before they go to sleep. And you know, it is so important for them to hear us pray. I know that when our children were young and we would start out, you know, with the prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. And then as they got older and, and they could talk, then we would let them pray. And, and, of course, they would go through, God bless Mommy, God bless Daddy, God bless Grandmommy, Granddaddy. Thank you for the trees. Thank you for my dog. Thank, you know, they, it, it was just so easy and so precious to hear them pray for the things that they... But it, the message we were trying to get across and that we we should get across today is God is real his name is to be hallowed and that needs to be taught in our homes and it needs to be taught to our children that they should be prayerful at all times prayer should be a daily expression a daily expression give us this day our daily bread we're, we're depending on father for the provision of that day you remember when the Israelites left Egypt and they were wandering in the wilderness and they were murmuring and complaining and so God gave them fresh manna to eat every morning. Every morning when they got up, there'd be this white substance on the ground. And it must have looked something like mushrooms or something like that, I don't know, but it, it was readily available for them and there was an abundance of it. They could get up every day and have what they needed to make it for that day. Now if they picked more than they needed, and they brought it into their tent, it would spoil. It would have a real bad smell about it, and, and, and maggots would get in it. And so what was God doing there? Well, he was teaching them to be dependent upon him for, his, for their daily need and to walk daily and not worry too much about tomorrow. Then on the sixth day, he said, you gather twice as much as you need on a normal day. And it was funny, it wouldn't spoil on Friday night, he, they could gather all they needed to make it through the Sabbath day. But again, what's God? He was teaching them that if they obeyed his commandments and observed the Sabbath, that he would provide food for them every day. So that went on for a while. And then they began to murmur and complain. And they, they was thinking, boy, I remember all the fish and all the meat we'd have in Egypt. And I remember all the leeks and all the melons and all the onions and all the garlic. And God said, okay, I'm going to send you quail. So he sent quail. And you know, um, quail and manna. I, I don't know how that was. Keith Green had a song that suggested that you could understand the limited ways in which you could prepare manna. Manna waffles, manna souffle, manna hotcakes, manna burgers, manna bagels, filet of manna, but manna bread, and manicotti so 
There, there are just a few ways that you could fix manna. But no, but being serious, you know, they complained about this. And, you know, all they had to do as children of God was to be obedient. And they were going to go into the land that flowed with milk and honey. But you know what? Because they murmured and complained, they didn't get to go on that land for a while. So that should teach us that God's going to provide for us every day. And it, it may not be a gourmet meal, but they just could not be patient. So Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Give us today our daily bread. Lord, I'll trust in you today. Now, I'll have to admit that sometime in our culture, I mean, we, we seem to have all we want. We seem to be able to, able to eat anything that we need. We, we order this. And so how hard is it to pray for our daily bread? Well, sometimes it's hard. Most of us have plenty. And if you recall when this COVID-19 thing was brought to light they told everybody you know you need to stock up <laughs> you need to go to the store and get things and bring it home and, and at least have a 30-day supply in your pantry well what happened you go to the store and the shelves would be empty and then everybody got nervous so they bought more and then the shelves continued to be empty we have an appetite for more we want more but god offers us daily bread in Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, it says, You say, I'm rich, I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Jesus gave the illustration in a parable about this wealthy farmer that had abundant crops one year. He said, you know, I'm going to build bigger warehouses than he did. I'm going to store up so much food that I'll not have another care in the world. He said, I'll just eat, drink, and be merry because I've got it made. And Jesus said to him, you fool, tonight you're going to die. Then whose things are, are they going to be? You know, that's the way it is for all of us who do not store up things that makes us rich toward God. So when we pray, give us today our daily bread, we're acknowledging total dependence on God and admitting, Father, without you, we're nothing. Now, obviously, it's okay to pray for things more than just your daily bread. Jabez prayed for more territory. Lord, enlarge my territory, and God blessed him. Isaac's servants prayed, Lord, help me. I need to get a wife for my master Isaac, and he did. Jesus uh, heard the prayers of followers that prayed that we'd all be one and be sanctified in truth. Paul prayed that all his Jewish friends would become Christians. So it's, it's not wrong to pray for things. It's not wrong to pray for more. But we begin by saying, give us today our daily bread, and we're acknowledging our dependence on God for everything. So there are several benefits that we need to look at when we realize that we're praying for daily bread. First of all, this prayer reduces anxiety. So I ask you this question. What are you worried about right now? What are you worried about right now? Probably something that has to do with tomorrow. <laughs> Not even today. You're worried about something that's going to happen this week. Something that you can't even control. So when we pray... Give me today my daily bread. I'll live for you today and not worry about tomorrow. Jesus said, don't be anxious about tomorrow. Consider the birds in the air. You never see a, a bird, he said, at a warehouse storing up worms. You never see a, a worm at a warehouse with a basket full of beetles because he was worried about tomorrow. He said, don't be anxious about that. Are you not more valuable than birds? So stop worrying, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagan runs after those things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of his own. And you know... 
It wasn't just a few weeks ago when we saw the market at 27500 and it fell. Got down to about 18000 And people's portfolios suffered. They were nervous about this. They were fretting over whether or not they'd be able to keep up the current lifestyle. But I suggest to you, instead of pacing the floor and worrying about tomorrow, trust in the Father. Give us today our daily bread. And then, of course, you see what the market did. The market has now returned. Uh, people seem to be happier about that. But, you know, the Apostle Paul taught, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts, your mind in Christ Jesus. So when we're praying, Lord, give us today my daily bread, we're saying, Lord, you're going to provide for me every day, and I'm not going to worry about tomorrow anymore. Secondly, this prayer will increase your contentment. When you pray for bread, it really reminds us truly how blessed we are you know we might say lord i've got all kinds of bread i've got hamburger i've got macaroni i've got frozen pizzas in the refrigerator i'm really blessed lord i i'm, I'm i've got so much and i know there are people around me that don't have as much as i do and i need to be praying for those folks i need to stop complaining so much because i really really do have a lot in the book of Timothy, chapter 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, be content with that. Be content with that. And then this prayer will enhance your appreciation for each day. If you pray for daily bread, it will enhance our appreciation. You know, we don't have a guarantee that we're even going to be here tomorrow. James says, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Your life is a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanish away. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread. We can rejoice along with the psalmist that said, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then, fourthly, this prayer replenishes our spiritual en energy. Our spiritual energy. You know, we all need more than just physical bread. We need spiritual bread. We need the bread of the Holy Spirit to empower us and to help us. Give me today my daily bread. We're, we're praying, God, Energize me today for the assignment that you've given me, for the assignments that I have. You know, when we talked about the outline, when Jesus gave them the opportunity, when they asked him the question, teach us to pray, this is another phrase that he, he, he wanted us to look at. And basically what he's saying, you know, the kind of activities that's laid out for me, give me the Holy Spirit to bless me in these activities. Lord, I, I pray for wisdom in everything that I do here. Help me with today help me to get through this and so that's the message i want us to get from this learn to slow down and realize that that our heavenly father is patient and will listen and will help me get through things like this you know i hear people say sometime well you know i never ask god for anything i pray about everything else i pray for other people but i never ask god for anything well that might be noble but I sure believe we need to pray to God and ask Him for things. You know, we need to allow God to work in our lives. And I think oftentimes when we say, well, I don't ask God for anything, it's because we feel like we're self-sufficient. We don't need God to help us. But actually, we need God to help us. And that's why we pray, give us this day our daily bread. And so, the third point that I wanted to make is, Prayer should be a daily, unselfish expression of dependency upon God. 
Notice what he says. Notice what we say. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And this is so important because if we pray for daily bread, what we're basically saying is, Lord, I want your will to be done in our world. It's hard for us to pray selfishly and materialistically when we've just prayed thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because basically what we're saying to him is this, thy will be done, not my will. When we, we, when we pray to him before, it, it's like we're acknowledging the plurality of this prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. In fact, when we start, we say, my Father, not, I mean, we're saying our Father, not my Father. It, it belong, God belongs to everybody. And when we pray, we're mindful that we're, we're part of, of a community of people. And so let's, uh, let's realize, too, that he didn't say, give me my daily bread. It's give us our daily bread. All of us, not just me, Lord. Help me not to be selfish. And, and I'm not demanding that all my needs be met contrary to your will. Thy will be done in all things. Give us this day our daily bread. Start praying our instead of my. And then pretty soon we'll begin to think of ways that we can meet the needs of other people. In John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no penny on him, how can the love of God be in him? You know, we just need to visualize the conduit of his grace. We just need to learn how to get there. And it's dangerous sometimes for us to think that everything we have or everything we do must be lined with gold. James says to us, suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action. It is dead. So when we pray, give us our daily bread, it's to be an unselfish prayer to the point that we're mindful of others and we do what we can to keep them. Prayer should be a daily unselfish expression of complete dependency on God. There's one other big difference between a hotel and the Father's house that I did not mention. In a hotel, you'll stay temporarily. You're a guest. And when you leave, you pay for the services that you've received. But when you leave in the Father's house, or in the Father's house, you're a member of the family forever. And you receive all the riches of his grace forever. Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And this bread is my flesh, which I give to you for the life of the world. So folks, this morning, if, if you're listening, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, if he's not the bread of life, then you're going to be spiritually famished. And that's why it's so important for us to be able to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Because there, there is a hunger that only Jesus Christ can satisfy. And if you haven't come to him, I hope you'll consider that. That you'll consider coming to Jesus Christ, the bread of eternal life, and receive his grace and his forgiveness. Thanks for joining us this morning on Facebook Live. We pray that things are well with you. And if we can help you in any way this week, please call our church office. We have a staff that's ready to be an aid to you and will help you in anything that we can. God bless you. Oh, how sweet will be to meet the Lord when he comes in glory by and by.
Again, thank you for joining us today on Facebook Live. We're sorry that we had to deliver that message last night. It's so such a late um, last minute. And uh, we will, again, have Facebook Live and no in-person services again next Sunday, August 2nd. And we will let you know uh, other updates. But the best way you can keep up with updates is checking out our Facebook page. Also checking out the church website. We keep it updated uh, regularly. Also, make sure you're downloading the Pathfinder or receiving it on email, and we'll keep up with all the news. The only thing that I wanted to touch on Pathfinder, please just make sure you download a Pathfinder or check it out online. Those of you that have signed up for the Garden Spot Trot Ch Church Challenge, we will be meeting next Sunday, August 2nd at 7 p.m. down on the square uh, if you'd like to join us for that. Those of you that have signed up, I will be contacting you this week. Uh, to collect money and also go over some other details. So those of you that have signed up, I will be in contact with you. There's other information in there about church cancellations and other things uh, um, that are coming up here at church or that have been postponed due to, some, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Just wanted to update you on one thing on the prayer list. Uh, Keith Pettit sent me a message this morning. His niece, Allison, who we've been praying for continually, uh, she is scheduled to have tentative surgery on her other lung this week uh, pending test results. So Keith and the family are asking for more prayers for Allison and her battle with cancer. And I do want to make you aware that there is a drive-by shower today from 1230 to 2 for Kelsey Ezell and Kevin Jameson that is under the back carport uh, awning at the back of the building. Thank you again for joining us. We'll close in prayer. Dear and Father, we thank you so much for this glorious day you've given us to rise up and serve you. And we thank you for just the ability and avenue of worship that we have here through Facebook and other technology. And we're thankful for everyone uh, joining us in this um, way to uh, spread your word and to share with others and also to um, be in, in, in uplifted by your word. And that we need to be uplifted in our prayer life and how we need to be asking for things of our daily bread that you give us, dear and Father. And we thank you so much for everything that you bless us with and keep us with um, all the days of our lives. Dear and Father, let us reach out to those that are around us. Let us show the love of Jesus. And let us continue, as, we, as Steve has been preaching the last few weeks, let us continue our prayer life to strengthen us and help us strengthen our families our friends, and others that we uh, come in contact with. Dear and Father, I say a special prayer for the Pettit family today, and especially Allison, as she is going through her struggles. Be with them in their ups and downs. Be with the doctors and nurses. And Dear and Father, we know she's in a battle, but we know that you are the great you are the great physician, and you can take care of her. And um, maybe send her a miracle, dear and Father, to bless her life and to keep her here with their family and friends even a little bit longer. Pray for Keith and Sonia and the rest of the family that um, reach out to their family members to help give them strength. And dear Father, let us as a church family to do the best that we can. We ask and pray that you be with Kelsey and Kevin and be with their shower today and be with their upcoming uh, wedding here in the next couple months and give them a, a well and fruitful light and life in your service, dear Father. Thank you again for all the blessings that you bestow upon us, especially your son who died upon uh, Calvary's cross. It's his name we pray. Amen. Thank you again. Have a good week.